there's been quite a lot of discussion over the last two or three weeks about uranium enrichment in connection with various nuclear plants that are being built around the world, including in Iran. So it seems to me that many people may not really understand why you should want to enrich uranium or what it involves. First, to explain the enrichment process, there's got to be a little bit of explanation about the, the sort of core science behind it. At the heart of the problem are so-called isotopes. You've got all the elements in the periodic table, and what makes each individual element different to another element is its atomic number. Now, for uranium, that's 92, and what that means is that there's 92 protons in the atomic core, and each of those has a little positive charge on it. Um, and this is a very, very tiny amount of space that these protons are in. Now, normally, you, you wouldn't want a load of positive charges in one space because they'd repel each other. And in such a tiny space, they'd really try and fly out. So nature came up with a way of uh, uh, buttressing uh, the charges between uh, individual protons. And it did this with little particles called neutrons. And because they have no charge, it is sometimes possible to have different numbers of neutrons without changing the element. Now, the two main isotopes of uranium which are of interest are U-235 and U-238. And that basically means that the U-238 has got three extra neutrons in the core compared to the U-235 isotope. Now, in terms of radioactivity and generating nuclear power or causing a nuclear explosion, uranium-235 is much more explosive. It will absorb neutrons and can blow apart releasing energy than uranium-238. The problem is that if you dig uranium out of the ground as it comes naturally, you have 99.3% of uranium-238 and only 0.7% of the uranium-235. So now we come to enrichment. What enrichment means is taking a sample of uranium and increasing the amount of uranium-235 relative to the amount of uranium-238. If you think about it, what this means is that you have to separate off some of the 238 and throw it away. And the two atoms are chemically identical, so you have to separate them by some sort of process that depends on their mass. And to make matters worse, you can't separate, or it's difficult to separate, the naked atoms, so you have to put the atoms into a compound, usually the compound UF6, uranium with six fluorine atoms around it, which is even heavier, and then you have a difference in mass of three between these two compounds. And the original way of enriching uranium, which was used during the Second World War in the American Manhattan Project, was to take a material that had fine holes, in fact it was the plastic Teflon, and the uranium-235 diffuses, finds its way through sheets of this material slightly faster than uranium-238. Nowadays, what people use is a so-called centrifuge. A centrifuge is a cylinder, a cylindrical container, that is spinning very, very fast. And the gas is spun round very, very quickly. And you all know, like if you're on a swing uh, or a, a merry-go-round, you want to go outwards because of the centrifugal force. Well, that happens in this system and the heavier 238 gets pushed to the outside, and the lighter 235 all blocks up in the middle. So in the center here, you put some sort of inverted cylinder with a tube, and so the gas that comes out around the edges has slightly more 238, and the one in the middle has slightly more 235. Now in each centrifuge, in one centrifuge, the effect is very small. So you need to use literally thousands of these centrifuges where the output of one is fed into the bottom of the next and <coughs> gradually the amount of uranium-235 will go up and up and up. 
And at the same time, the material that you take out at the bottom of the system will have progressively more and more and more uranium-238. Now, much of the argument about whether a country is trying to make bombs or trying to do, make fuel for nuclear power depends on the amount of uranium-235 compared to 238. For making weapons, you need much more 235 because you want to release all the energy at once from quite a small mass than if you're trying to do nuclear power where you want the energy to come out steadily over a year or so, so you can generate electricity. And it needs real experts, people far beyond me, to tell whether a particular plant is designed for making weapons or for making fuel. Of course, at the end of the other end of your enrichment plant, you get a lot of uranium, which has the 235 almost completely removed. This is called depleted uranium. This is just uranium turnings in a jar, and they're under oil to protect them. The vast majority of that uranium is the isotope 238. This is depleted, which we'll come on into a little bit, so only about 0.02% of it is 235. Depleted uranium is an extremely heavy and dense material and has a variety of uses. People use depleted uranium as weights inside aeroplanes. Every plane needs a small weight. I think it's at the front, just to balance it. If you make it out of uranium-238, it takes up less space than if you make it out of lead or copper or something like that. And of course, uranium-238, depleted uranium, is what is used in um, chemistry labs for people who are studying the chemistry of uranium because it's an advantage when you're handling it if the material is, has as low a radioactivity as possible. That's, that explanation you gave of uranium enrichment sounded very simple. Why can't everyone enrich uranium? Why can't you here at the University of Nottingham enrich uranium? Well, there are a number of reasons. First of all, you need a huge plant. Secondly, in order to get an effect, your centrifuge has to spin enormously fast. So it has to be made out of extremely special metals so that the actual can doesn't fly apart. I think, the, the, like a lot of things in life, the basic idea is really simple, but actually executing it so you don't end up with clouds of radioactive UF6 pouring all over the place is actually not trivial. And you need something that will, that the plant will use a huge amount of electricity and handling fluorine to make UF6 is chemically quite difficult. Handling the vapour of uranium um, fluoride, UF6, is extremely difficult. And so it's only possible for a very large company or a nation to do this. It's quite beyond the um, capabilities of any individual or even individual university.